Yo, what's up people? My name is Tanachi and I'm back in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, hope you're keeping really well. Alrighty, so in this video I'm not going to be building anything. I thought I'd do a little chill out video and go over some various building techniques, uh, tips and tricks kind of thing I guess. And I was looking at the obelisk that I did just there. Um, I don't know what was going through my mind with that right one. I mean it's just not, it, I mean what, did, I, where, I, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what to say, it's just not realistic. I mean the other two are pushing the boundaries of realism as it is. That one on the right, that's just lost the plot completely. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to go over is signs. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll probably see me play around with signs quite a bit. And uh, I'm often kind of clipping some signs over other signs to get different effects. Like in front of you, for example, I've got loads of smaller signs clipped over a very large billboard. I don't seem to have any problems when I'm working with a large billboard, but the other ones, they, you get random effects. And by that, what I mean is, say for example, actually, let's go higher, let's put it up there. And if we get one of these like square ones, and if I put it over the top, uh, you'll see that it'll clip through just fine and that will work with any sign that we try to put over the top of a of the large billboard and you can see there that all the signs they come through and they're in front of the large billboard but for example now if i try to put this one here on the right side if i try to clip the right one over the small billboard it, you're going to notice on the right side it doesn't come through but on the left side it works just fine i've got no idea why uh, so it really does depend what signs you're using and not only that but where you clip them but a way around that for example is you could just start from the left and then work your way to the right and now the one on the right will work just fine and especially once you start trying to clip really small signs over other small signs most of the time they won't work sometimes they'll work but there is a way around all of this so what i do is I use pillars and I've gone through this before but I'll go through it again quickly so taking any of these pillars doesn't matter which one we use let's just put one there for example and one, one there and uh, let's grab a small billboard so as you can see here you can slide the the billboard uh, along the top of the pillar and put it exactly where you want to put it um, there's no like snapping uh, grid there for example so it lets you put it exactly and precisely where you want to and by doing that if I put that there if you put the the pillar really close like for example right next to it you can see exactly where you want and by doing it like this you can get it right in front of the other sign so right in front of the, the smaller billboard you can use this method to accurately place signs anywhere you want and not only signs but you can also use this for walls so for example if you see here let's come out a little bit here and we can put the wall pieces exactly where you want along the pillar using these together with the road barriers for example again you can slide the road barrier wherever you want along the pillar you can also rotate them and then once you've got the position and angle you want then you can use a kind of like a, a wall piece and then of course you can use that to snap a foundation on and it just allows you to do a lot of things and to make kind of a different paths and different angles with roads and foundations if you've got patience and uh, you're willing to play around with this technique uh, you really can't put anything anywhere like for example here in uh, infinity works that i did recently there's quite a few angles there that i couldn't do normally so i was using that method to get like different angles along with different positions to try and get these uh different pathways so using those systems all these little signs here where you can see i've got little signs kind of clipped over each other and with this big one i got like a another billboard just behind that billboard so all these places where you see me do um a sign on top of signs is using exactly the same system got this billboard uh, clipped behind these four foundations as you can see uh, you don't see the top of it because i didn't want the um the whole billboard to show so what i did to do that is uh, just delete these and grab one of these pillars and put that there and then uh put that there as well and let's delete that one as well so you can see the uh, the pillar there so then i just grabbed one of these so that would be the normal position now that I know where the normal position is, I can just come right in front of that, that wall piece there and put another wall piece just there. So now I can use that and I can put a, uh, what are they called, a foundation right in front of it. And now you can see I've got this wall just in front of this wall by doing that technique. I did it very quickly. If you spend a bit more time, you can do it a lot more, uh, a lot more properly. But just to give you an idea, a common technique that we use uh, to try and get foundations in like half positions or different positions is to put a foundation uh, catwalk sorry and then snap a uh, what they call a foundation like on various points against the the catwalks and you can kind of get the um 
the foundations like offset a little bit in different positions but another way we can do this quite easily as well is with uh, with pillars and just by putting them down you can snap uh, the foundation directly underneath it's like it does give you another way to put foundations kind of like offset them in different positions and it gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can also do it in any position or on the foundation and not only that you can also of course you can rotate the, the pillars and then snap to that rotation so it does give you a little bit more flexibility and also you can snap it on top of the pillar as well but you can also do it um, on diagonal pillars as well so the roll barriers up and down the pillars as well even when they're, they're vertical also what's cool with this is you can kind of make curves as well uh, not great curves but you can what I mean is you can make curves at different angles and then you, well, the inside of the curve, the outside is going to be a little bit jagged, as you can see. But for example, you can then close that off um, like that, for example, and uh, make kind of different curves and different kind of shapes as well. And so it really is kind of like about experimenting uh, with what's possible uh, with these different techniques. So every time I kind of play with them, these techniques, I usually come up with something different and it's the kind of thing you just got to experiment with really if you do experiment you can kind of come up with different shapes and uh, different kind of curves and I've used this technique quite a few times on various builds here and there to get foundations in positions that were a little bit awkward to do uh, normally actually a quick side note if you're looking for a good video on how to do circles check out a guy called MGS Genesis he's got a couple cool videos going into a little bit more depth on how to make various circles and round structures so you can check that out if you're interested MGS Genesis all right so I'm not really going over many specifics I kind of believe a little bit more in sharing their technique and then letting people come up with their own ideas with those techniques a little bit like that saying uh, you, you give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day but if you teach a man how to fish he'll start a fish and chip shop so when building factories you might often find that you've got one wall that's really bland and boring and you're not sure what to do with it if the wall is horizontal like this then what I might try to do is I'll try to break it up in half or something like that to that effect and by that what I mean let's say we delete uh, that that area there again one of these pillars and then put, put it there let's do, delete that one as well so you can see uh, what's happening we'll get a wall and put it anyway just offset it a little bit just by doing something as simple as that uh, straight away I've broken up that horizontal wall and at the very small detailing that has now kind of separated the horizontal wall into two parts and then sometimes what I might do is I'll change the let's use yeah let's just use any of these concrete kind of foundations and I'll paint that one in the middle because I quite like the contrast of the kind of that like the rough matte concrete and asphalt foundations against the kind of shiny uh, coated concrete and then once you paint them very easily you've had a nice little detail and it, it, it's very easy to do very quick to do and you just break up that large horizontal wall in, in a matter of uh, 30 seconds so again let's just put one of these uh these uh pillars there and then we'll grab ourselves a wall and let's put that say let's say we're going to start roughly there doesn't matter where and let's get a foundation and let's snap the foundation uh to the top of that and we can delete that as well let's take the yeah let's take those and then go vertical let's come down and again we can still paint that as well get yeah, a really quick and easy way just by adding different layers adding a little bit of depth to a plain wall that doesn't take long at all it can be done really really quickly if a wall is very tall and narrow i find it sometimes better to break it down in the middle vertically instead of horizontally it just makes that large empty space seem a little bit smaller when you when you cut it in half basically so there are of course so many things that you can do with a wall just throwing some really basic quick ideas that are very easy to do and to do them really quickly as well so when possible i do always try to use foundations as a factory wall and not actually use uh, wall pieces like these the foundations I find add a little bit more depth and structural integrity in terms of the visual appearance and also they give you a lot more options aesthetically but also practically and what I mean by practically is, for example since update 5 released and now that you can clip anything nearly anything through everything uh, that has been a real game changer and I often use foundations to help me build nice clean builds and by hiding messy work inside the foundations like you'll often see me well you won't see it you'll often find that I've run power cables uh, through the wall and I don't have any problem with that personally because it's not like it's unrealistic there's nothing unrealistic about running power cables for a wall I mean very likely the house that you're living in now and the building that you're in is probably full of uh, wires running through walls and then you can obviously uh, have it coming out wherever you want and then have lights at the top 
So it lets you run a lot of power cables and stuff like that through walls. So you have basically walls, as you know, with the, with the conveyor holes, so you can run conveyor belts through them. Sometimes I use mergers instead to bring in like uh, conveyor belts from outside into a factory or something like that or even within the factory from room to room. One, they give you a lot more flexibility in exactly where you want to put the merger, whereas when you start using wall pieces, the position of the, the holes is set. But with mergers, you can put them exactly where you want. And also you can put them, of course, if you put like a, a smaller foundation, one meter one, it's a lot easier just to put them in different levels as well. On the side where they come out, again, I'll put another merger and then just connect it inside with a conveyor belt and then Sometimes I'll even use these to run stuff up and down through walls as well. Now, personally, I don't have any problem with this. Uh, some people might not like this kind of stuff. They might think, yeah, it's, it's a little bit cheating. But I think personally, since they've allowed us uh, to start clipping stuff through the wall, I don't see any problem with it at all. In terms of realism, if you're part of a corporation that's got space travel, particle accelerators, space elevators, and quantum technology, quantum pocket, whatever it's called. If you've got technology to do all of that and you're that advanced, how hard is it to put a bloody hole in a wall of a conduit and channel conveyors and, and pipes and uh, wires for a wall? It's not unrealistic at all. And again, they should do it without any mods. And I personally think that sometimes using mergers uh, as like feeding conveyors into a factory, it looks a little bit more like it's a proper part of uh, an integral part of the factory. As I mentioned, I'll often use the inside of foundations to run cables, walls, pipes, anything basically. And I said, I don't see any problem with it personally. And sometimes you're not going to want that. Sometimes you're going to want to have all of the, uh, the wiring and conveyor and pipe work exposed. If you see my builds, I like to vary. So I do very clean builds, very messy builds, and stuff where everything's exposed, stuff where everything's hidden. And I'm just throwing these ideas out there. Here, for example, I had about four belts that I wanted to bring into a factory. And using the conveyor wall holes didn't work out quite well because they got set positions, but it, using mergers allows me to put the mergers wherever I want and then to bring the goods in and then they come straight out again on this side. So it just allows you to funnel uh, conveyors through foundations. As I mentioned, it's a lot more flexible than using um, what they call these conveyor walls because the holes are in set positions and sometimes those positions are not exactly as you need them. So using mergers is sometimes a good option. And while we're here, here you can see where I've kind of broken up sections of the wall here. So here I had to enlarge a tall vertical like piece so i broke it up horizontally in half by putting this detail here going across and then as you can see two like indented areas and then painted them blue it just helped to break up a, a large vertical section of wall also when doing buildings i find that it can be a good idea sometimes to have a color scheme so here for example of course the main color is the concrete because most of that is concrete but i've used two accent colors the main one being blue and the secondary color being brown. So you'll see lots of blue LEDs and blue painted wall sections. And then the secondary color I've used brown. And if you kind of do a build and you kind of stick to two or three colors and it gives the build a little bit of consistency in appearance. And again, here back at the uh, Atom Industries I did recently, but other than the concrete, of course, the, the, the primary color I've used is the bright neon uh, cyan green color and the secondary color I've used in this build is black and I've kind of stuck to that, those two colors throughout the build and it just gives the build a little bit of consistency when you stick to two or three colors having one primary and one secondary again on this wall you can see how I've tried to broke up a very plain wall vertically I broke it up horizontally because it's a very square box on, on the left and back of this building so I just broke it up by adding uh, vertical sections that go in a bit just give the building a little bit of sense of depth and layers there'll be times when none of those rules will really apply or be helpful at all like for example in Eden I've tried to make it look like a city and so I don't want just two colors a primary and secondary color I want it to be bustling with lots of different colors so sometimes that's not going to work and there might be times when you want just a nice big plain empty wall and a simple looking build with not many details at the end of the day right yeah um what was I going to say what I was going to say now. Um, yeah, at the end of the day anyway, uh, it gets dark. At the end of the day, everyone's a little bit different and uh, they play the game with different goals in mind. I've read comments where some people don't care at all about aesthetics and there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But some people are really into the, just the factory aspect and efficiency and production, picking the best recipes 
and the most efficient recipes. And you know what? Why not? Absolutely, why not? And then some people are the complete opposite, where they're playing the game and they don't really care about any production, and all they're doing is uh, aesthetic builds. And, and again, you know what? Why not? That's the good thing about this game. You can play it however you want. I remember when I first started, the big thing for me was logic and logistics. That's what kind of got me into Satisfactory. All of my earlier videos, they're really all about logistics and, and trying to come up with like some unusual ideas to alternate production and control the production in different kind of ways. But there's some really good content creators out there and uh, there's loads I can recommend. They've got some really awesome builds. The obvious ones being like, I'm Kivit. When I first started playing, I remember watching his videos and he was making absolutely brilliant mega factories and uh, awesome stuff and he did it in a very entertaining way. But I think everyone knows I'm Kibitz and he's like the most popular uh, satisfactory guy I think. Total uh, Eclipse. If I had to recommend one uh, content creator for satisfactory, I would probably recommend Total to someone because uh, he's like the one stop shop of like uh, every all the information you need for a satisfactory with tips and tricks and tutorials it's a good builder and he seems like a top geezer as well so definitely worth checking out his uh, channel if you don't know but probably have since i'm on the uh, topic i used to like amelie of the sea oh i don't think she continues to make any more videos i think it's been a long time but at the time in update 3 her build was just i didn't see i haven't seen anything quite like it she made like a whole world i think stargate atlantis and some other kind of theme also i like this guy called papa snoozy again i don't think he makes videos anymore but I loved his videos. I loved his accent. Uh, I really like his videos. It's a shame he doesn't make any more. But anyway, well, there are some content creators that are making great videos now. And probably like you already know about all these, but I'm going to say anyway, Drawing Chaos does some amazing builds as well. He's got a very unique style. I'm not sure, I'm not an architect. I don't know what you would call his style. That got a gothic art deco kind of cathedral, but it's very impressive. He does some really big builds as well. And also another big favorite of mine was Dan P. To me, Dan P is the king of uh, large scale builds. I, I, I haven't seen anyone do it better. It's not easy what he does with these really large logistical uh, projects that are not easy to kind of like arrange, but he does it nice and cleanly. Everything looks nice and organized and, and on a scale that not many people do. So he's doing a new project now, which I would definitely recommend go watch. Dan P, brilliant, but he's Fluxo. Really, really nice clean builds. Uh, he's got a really modern clean style. I really, really like them. Very, very nice. If you don't know about Fluxo, definitely go check him out because he's got some really cool builds. Caterfly, he does some really unique themed builds. Now, he did a couple factories that look, that look like screws or uh, canisters and you know, wires and cables. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out Caterfly as well. Also, there's a lot of good German and French builders and Turkish as well. And how are you doing, Satis Kabat? I'm not, I'm not saying your, your name correctly. A lot of Eastern European, Asian. Obviously, there's a lot of good builders everywhere, but obviously the language, I'm not familiar with their names because I, I don't watch them. From the few clips I've seen here and there, that's some very cool stuff indeed. I know there's a lot of builders also in, on Twitch, but I'm not really involved in Twitch. So I don't really know. I know a guy called Brain DG and uh, Bits. I know is very popular on Twitch. I think. Um, does he do YouTube? I'm not sure. Anyway, Popcak. I think it is another one. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't really get involved with Twitch, so I don't know too much about who's there and what they're doing. To be honest, I'm gonna be honest. I do get a little bit bored watching streams, so I don't do. Uh, I don't watch uh, Twitch, but I know a lot of people love it. And you know what, why not? If that's what you like, why bloody not? A couple of guys have asked me actually about streaming. And at the moment, I'm not going to. I just can't be bothered to be honest. And uh, I don't really want to invest any more time. Maybe later, we'll see. And I'm sure there's a lot of other really good builders out there as well. I just maybe haven't caught their videos. There was another guy, I can't remember his name, like Scully or something. And I only saw one video, but it was what I saw was really nice. Um, I just can't remember his name. I should check it out before I talk about it. Anyway, I don't know what you're watching already and what you know, but if you don't know about any of those guys, I do recommend checking them out. They all do really good stuff. We've all got our own unique style and everyone adds something a little bit different. Also, because I love logistics and kind of alternative uh, ideas and production ideas and weird stuff like that with Logic, I'm gonna put in the description a link to a guy called Jason Latter and he did a system with remotely accessible storage. Now, I did a couple videos on this. One using truck stations and another one using splitters on a loop, kind of like amplifier, multiply and output to give you a return. But he sent me a save recently that does remotely accessible storage and is brilliant, much better than what I did. So I'm gonna put in the description a link to like the Reddit post that he did where you, I think you got, he's got a download to the save with the remotely accessible storage. If you like logic stuff, definitely check out Jason Latter's remotely accessible storage. Really, really good. I'm a bit of a sad bastard. That's pretty much what I like the most of it is. I've only kind of really got into the aesthetic side of builds because um, there's only so far you can go with logic in this game really, it's not really designed. Well, you, you can do what you want, but you get to a point where it's more more trouble than it's worth, if you know what I mean. But what he's done on that remotely accessible storage is really good. 
definitely worthwhile if you like logic and be bothered with that kind of like alternative ideas as most of you probably know already there's going to be an update on this area on this side of the map sometime soon and they've clearly told us this side of the map is going to change somewhat significantly from from what i've understood from jace and that video what he said anyway uh, basically he said if you've got anything here and just move he said just get out and uh, so that does give the impression that it's going to change quite significantly and as far as i know it came right up to well up to the water here kind of thing all the valley in the middle going all the way to that the the canyon and the desert area so all this side of the map is going to change and if you might remember i had my kind of starter base there which i had from the very beginning which was the second base I ever kind of built. But I deleted it anyway, so I'm um, getting rid of old factories that were done pre-update five. So I'm gonna call it, and uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna upload my world again. You will now spawn at this location here, and I just put a temporary the hub right here. When you spawn, don't forget to loot the crate there. It's got some various equipment. If you're using fly mode, of course, none of this matters. Just fly around like Superman. But if you're not using fly mode, once you spawn here, you can either go down these stairs here, which leads you straight into Eden. And at the end of Eden, there's a train station, and one of those trains will lead you to Area 51 and Obelisk. But otherwise, if you come this direction, uh, you'll see like a that new train station that I've done called Eden West and on the on the sign here you can kind of see what I've got marked uh, there's three trains that will come to this area and I've got them marked exactly what train will take you where if you're going on the green train or the orange train be a bit patient because they're long journeys and they do take a while they share the kind of same track up to um, well there's like a little slip area here so when one of the trains come it will wait on this section because they share the same track for a quite a bit of a distance one of them will wait on this section here if the other one is like on that track so if like i said if you're using the uh, the green train or the the orange train just be a little bit patient uh, maybe like three four minutes i don't know and uh, the blue train otherwise comes pretty frequently like literally every minute and a half or something i don't know i haven't timed it but it's pretty frequent if you want to go to area 51 or the obelisk head to the other side of eden and catch the main train over there all right it's the time to wrap up the video it's just been a little chill out video a few tips and tricks having a little chat as well maybe you found some of that stuff useful probably not but what can you do it is what it is anyway guys hope you've enjoyed thank you for watching and uh, maybe i'll catch you again soon